So I asked Luca, what on earth does TBC stand for? And you will not believe his reply. Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Nick Tan Chats, my magic and mostly mentalism review show. My name is Nick Tan and on today's episode we'll be taking a look at the TBC Box 2.0 put out by Luca Volpe, Paul McCaig and Alan Wong. Uh, as always, before anything else, I just want to take a second or so to thank all my subscribers thus far for your support. Uh, in the past week, you know, a handful of you have um, sent me like messages and emails uh, very heartwarming messages and emails uh, telling me about how much you've enjoyed the content so far uh, and I'm really really you know very appreciative of, of all the kind words that you guys have given me. It's heartwarming because you know I'm not I'm not like one of the big players uh, on this magic review channel circuit but just knowing that I'm able to actually add value to, to you guys out there you know um, affecting the mentalism world in some way uh, I think to me that is exceptionally meaningful so I will try to continue to do that as best as I can. So on today's show, we'll be taking a look at the TBC Box 2.0. All right, now if you have no idea what this product is, just seeing the 2.0 at the end of, of the name obviously suggests to you that there was an original version, all right, a 1.0, so to speak. And, and you would be right, all right, because uh, there was a version, uh, the original TBC Box that first came out sometime 2014, I think, uh, sometime in 2014, I think Luca Volpe actually released that back then. And this is actually uh, the latest 2.0 version. Now, I did not get the original TBC box. So I'm, un I'm not really able to give you an accurate comparison between the first version and the second version, but I think I understand enough uh, to be able to explain, you know, the differences, the main differences. So what is the TBC box? All right, the TBC box, uh, in its most basic form, it is a billet switching box. Now, my first exposure to such devices uh, was actually from uh, in Animan's uh, Practical Mental Effects. In there, obviously, there is the description of the OM billet switching box uh, by Otis Manning. And back in like uh, 2012, 2013, I did experiment with trying to make that very box. I, I succeeded, you know, I, I made it out of like just very simple gift boxes. It worked, uh, it was functional, however, it did not look very nice, obviously. It looked like what it was, right? It looked extremely homemade and I had problems uh, resetting it as well. It's, it's not due to the design of the box, it was more due to my execution of the design. Then sometime in like 2014, uh, I picked up a, a PDF uh, from Steve Pellegrino uh, called the Open Billet Box. It's a PDF that, that describes how to make uh, a billet switching box using like a very, you know, normal standard looking uh, storage box, a foldable storage box. So I made up the Steve Pellegrino open billet box. I got the exact box that he suggested in the PDF and I will, I'll show it to you. So this is the box, all right? This is the box. It is huge, all right? It is huge. It, I mean, on paper, it, so it doesn't sound that big but it's actually huge. Uh, I mean, I do perform for large audiences at times, right? Um, sometimes I perform for, I don't know, up to a thousand people in a huge ballroom, but the majority of the time I'm only working for like audiences, you know, like two to 300 people. And in that kind of sized audience, I normally only get like, what, 20 pieces of paper filled in, you know, max. So to have 20 pieces of folded paper dumped into a box as huge as this, just feels quite disproportionate to what I need the box for. Then I decided to look for another box, all right? So I made up, using the Steve Pellegrino method, I made up a smaller box and this is the one that I came up with. Same design, the same kind of gaff uh, inside this kind of box. Now this box is a box that I actually used for quite a quite a while, quite a, quite a number of shows actually. It worked really well. My only problem is Every time I used it, it was a constant source of irritation to me that it was not a square. Right? So every time I used it, every time I took it out and I, I asked people you know, to put in their, their pieces of paper, I was always, always like screaming in my head, right? Why is this not a square? And it, it just bugged me on a, on a level that almost drove me insane. So after going through boxes that were too big, boxes that were the right size but the wrong shape, I came across a couple of these boxes 
inside my storeroom and they belong to my wife. After I got clearance from her, it's always important to get clearance from her, I immediately grabbed a few of them and I made this. All right, now this uh, is actually the box that I've been using for the past, I don't know, six, six years or more maybe. Um, it's, it's basically the box from uh, Ikea. So this is the one that I made and once I added it to my show, it just changed things completely, all right? I, I mainly use it for uh, a Q&A routine that I, that I do. So I get people to fill in uh, billets, uh, pieces of paper, fold them up, I would go around and I would collect uh, all the pieces of paper. I head back to the stage and then uh, from the stage, I would then proceed into doing um, you know, Q&A style reveals uh, to the audience. It plays really strongly and the box itself just made everything work very, very smoothly. So in addition to the Q&A routine that I perform, I also use it uh, to perform uh, a routine, uh, a lovely routine from uh, another friend of mine from the UK, uh, Ken Dine, a routine he calls Daydreamer. All right, so that is the way I also use uh, this box. So I thought I'd take this opportunity as well to give a quick shout out to uh, Luca Volpe. Uh, if you've been in mentalism for any amount of time, I think the name should not be new to you. Uh, Luca has uh, released uh, a lot of material. I think he has contributed quite a lot as well to the mentalism community because he has created, I think, you know, especially during you know, the whole pandemic uh, going on in the world, he has created a very vibrant and very active Facebook group uh, called Luca Volpe Mentalism Productions. Uh, and on that group, you know, he's, got, uh, he's always got lectures and, and you know, discussion panels. Uh, I've, I've been very fortunate actually to be part of some uh, discussion panels right there, as well as uh, to conduct uh, my lecture as well, right? So through Luca, uh, he has actually given me a chance to let, you know, more mentalists around the world uh, hear my voice so to speak, all right? So uh, thank you, Luca, for, for all these opportunities that you've given the mentalists and you know what you've created in the mentalism community. So what do you get inside the box, all right? You get this very nicely packaged box, all right? This is the classic Alan, Alan Wong kind of a packaging. Uh, inside the box, you will get the link to the instructional video. And on the instructional video, it runs for about, I don't know, 30, just under 35 minutes, I think, uh, you will have uh, the three of them, uh, Luca, Paul, and Alan, you know, discussing the box. Alan will take you through uh, how to work the box, how, you know, how to handle the box as well. And then in the second half of the video, uh, they will also be discussing uh, routine ideas to get you started. They give you basic information, but it is enough to get you up and running. So inside the case, you will see the stuff. They give you a, a stack of, you know, slips of paper as well as a sharpie inside so you could get started with your Q&A routines uh, immediately. There is also uh, a, a manuscript. Uh, this is it's about 38 or so pages uh, and inside the booklet you will find again information about uh, the box, uh, how to work the box and on top of that you will also get a couple of routine ideas as well uh, to get you started. But of course, all of you are interested in the actual box itself and that's where it sits on the other side. So when I first got the TBC box, all right, I could immediately tell the difference. Uh, this is a TBC box and this is the homemade, Nick Tan homemade version, all right. This is a lot sturdier and the material is obviously more durable and tougher than, than this one. So the main difference between uh, the 2.0 and versus the original, again, I don't have the original, but I think these are the two main differences just based on my understanding. First of all, they operate the same way. You, you can open them up this way. You can assemble them in front of the spectators. Uh, the main difference, the first one is this zipper. All right, this zipper, uh, in this version 2.0, it is silver. Right, so you can see the silver zipper inside, okay, and that is one of the main differences here because this silver zipper makes for a very nice little convincing subtlety. So they see the silver zipper there. Now this is what it looks like, the inside of the box looks like when the box has not been activated. Okay, when the box is not activated, I'm going to activate it now. When it's activated, there's still a zip there. Which means, uh, I mean, it won't make a difference to everyone else in the audience, but to the spectator who is choosing one of the billets that the spectators put into the box, they will still see that zipper over there. So it kind of psychologically cancels out the method that you're actually using. I believe that this zipper was also present in the first version. However, calling attention to it, 
uh, by making it silver instead of black. I think the first version it was black. By making it just silver like that, just transforms it from being uh, part of the prop to being part of the method because now it is it is part of the the convincer, right? It's now become a subtlety that nothing has happened. Right, so one more difference that uh, this version has over the first original version, I believe, is that the gaff, the gimmick, is actually secured magnetically, which means you can have uh, the the box sitting on stage. All right, so now the box is not not activated yet. All right, so you can have the box sitting on stage, hands off right from the start, and you can have spectators come onto the stage and drop their billets into the box. So what do I like about the TBC? I think, well, first of all, I like the material. From what I understand from, from Alan uh, in watching the video, it is actually made of a material that they use to make umbrellas, all right? So it's gonna be much tougher than, you know, what I'm, I'm used to over here. And it's, it's, it's sturdier as well. While I will be quite gentle with it, I know that this can withstand some use. And again, I can't stress how much I like this aspect of it, uh, the, the zip convincer, um, you know, of it being inside there in its activated state and not activated state, uh, they look the same, all right? So I think that is just very clever thinking. Turning a part of the box that is naturally there, having it transform into part of the method to make it more convincing. But I think the biggest feature of, of using the TBC is how innocent it is when you bring it out like that on stage, all right? Because people see you literally assembling the box on stage. So they know that on a subconscious level, they know that it is, it is empty. I mean, uh, don't, obviously don't, don't do this, this kind of thing, all right? You know, just assembling it on stage casually, people kind of subconsciously know that it is empty and uh, everything looks just so fair and, and above board. And what I like about this, this method, okay, not this box particularly, all right, but what I like about the overall method of using uh, billet switching as, as a method, I think it is, it is a joy to use. And I've mentioned this term before about methods being a joy to use. If a method is, a, is, a, is fun to use, it's easy, it's a joy to use, it normally results in better performances. If, seriously, right, if you think back to a performance that you gave that was, that was great, you know, and you know you did a good job, chances are it is because you used a method that was very dependable uh, and it almost took care of itself, leaving you the space to just focus on the performance and the presentation of the effect. Which brings me to the final point about this box. Now, this is a great prop to have. I mean, I highly recommend it. I mean, yes, you can make your own, you know, but this is a professionally made prop. All right, which makes me feel nice to use as well, right? It's, it's sometimes nice to use nice things. Uh, but that being said, I think the biggest point I want to bring across is that buying this prop will not make you a super mentalist suddenly, okay? That's not what this box does. The method for this box literally is over in a second, okay? But what happens after that second of method, that part is up to you to make the whole effect come to life. So whether it is for a Q&A routine or whether you're using this box to, shall we say, ensure a, a certain outcome for, for your routine, it really is up to you to, to bring that part of, of, of this whole performance to life. What I'm trying to say is this prop will take care of the method for you really well, but what happens after that is entirely up to you. So that's all I have to say about the TBC box. Uh, well, if you are in on the lookout for a, a, a billet switching box that does the job really well, looks gorgeous, very well made, I highly recommend this. Now, before I leave you guys today, um, I'm gonna tell you something. I wanted to do a review on the TBC box, right? So I, I was gonna do a review, I was writing out the review, then I suddenly realized after so many years of knowing about the TBC box on the market, I have no idea what TBC stands for. So I'm also very, very sure that in the whole world, all the users of the TBC box have no idea what TBC stands for, right? So I asked Luca, what on earth does TBC stand for? And you will not believe his reply. He refused to tell me. He refused to tell me, uh, he found it quite amusing and started laughing about it. Uh, he did tell me that there was a story about how you know, TBC came about, um, but he didn't want to tell me the exact details because he felt that, you know, it's nice to keep the mystery and um, to keep it a secret. He did suggest, however, uh, to let, 
you know, the viewers of this particular episode have some fun. So I'd like all of you right now, uh, just for fun, okay, just for fun, to key in in the comment section down below what you think TBC stands for. Uh, Luca is also going to read all of this uh, so you can make it as funny as possible, but keep it clean because this is a, you know, it's a publicly uh, accessible place. So I like to keep it, you know, relatively positive. All right. So key in the comment section down below what you think TBC stands for. So we've come to the end of this episode uh, on the TBC Box 2.0. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this episode. Uh, as always, please stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I will see you again on a future episode of Nick Tan Chats.